And um, so with that, I'll get going. Uh, notice Vitrec is A2L accredited. That's uh, our famous little sticker there. Um, we will send this to everyone. I love that picture of all the electricity. How do you like that? And um, it does have some interesting things in it. Uh, we've got some embedded videos in it uh, where we have some of our equipment is uh, videoed and stored on YouTube. And if you control click on it, it will actually give you the demo of the equipment that we're going to talk about here. So uh, just as an overview, uh, Vitrex has been around uh, 30 years. We are in Poway, which is a suburb of San Diego. And it says serving over 30 countries. I don't know where that number came from. I think it's a lot more than that. I see the orders come in from just all over the world. And we make uh, our key product lines um, our big business, we started out with and we've stayed with high pots um, and electrical safety testers. But if you combine that with switch and software, then you've got a cable test system. So we do a lot of cable and connector testing. Uh, we are also in the power analyzer market. We compete with companies such as Yokogawa. And um, we make uh, really the only high voltage meter in the world. So, and by high voltage, I'm talking about like over 1200 volts. So, uh, as I mentioned, we're an accredited Calab 17025. And um, so it's a little early for questions, but if you would like me to cover something in particular, um, you know, Alex Cordero says he can't hear the audio. Um, Susie, can you hear me? Yeah, everyone else seems fine. So I think it oh. must be on his side. Okay. No, I can hear you. Okay, good deal. Thanks, so, um, so here's um, here's three ways that we can help metrologists. We have three different products that I thought might be of interest to you. One on the left, that's the 4700 high voltage meter, and Calabs typically uses for calibrating high pots and other high voltage equipment. Uh, and then in the center is our power analyzer, and um, this power analyzer is the most accurate in the world, good enough that it's useful for calibrating other power analyzers and power meters. And then the uh, we also make a small portable calibrator on the right that's called the 2000. And um, it's useful for calibrating uh, DC voltages, just small voltages. It's kind of a process calibrator, 0 to 20 volts, uh, but also temperature measurement and temperature simulation. Uh, and also same for flow simulation and pressure instrumentation simulation. So all of this is uh, manufactured in uh, Poway, which is San Diego. And so uh, uh, you know, we do have a few supply chain problems like the rest of the world, but in general, um, since we manufacture and support locally, it's probably a lot less than other people. So this is, uh, we'll start off with the 4700 high voltage meter. And um, if you look at the display in the lower left there, one thing you'll see is it's a dual meter. It's displaying both DC and AC simultaneously. And notice it is also a frequency meter and it's measuring the peak to peak voltage and the crest factor. Now, if you don't know what crest factor is, it's the ratio between the peak voltage and the RMS voltage. And for a, um, for a, um, for a pure sine wave, it's rather easy to measure. Uh, in the old days, you didn't even need a true RMS meter to do that. Just a regular RMS meter would do it. But when signals get uh, to be non-sinusoidal, it's really helpful to have a true RMS meter like this one. And in particular, if your crest factor gets real high, it's nice to know about it because that can affect your measurements. This can tell you. So it has a 0.03% basic DC accuracy. Um, RMS, it's uh, 0.1. And it's got a rangeless design. Um, Vitrick has a unique technology that other people don't have. And the unique technology is the way we do our design with one range. We call it a rangeless design because we don't change ranges. But essentially, it's just one range. And so um, essentially, you, as you're taking data, it will never have discontinuities because you're just switching ranges. So we can take a direct input. You see the banana jacks on the front. They're good up to 10 kilovolts RMS and 15-volt peak. But the probes on the right can be plugged in, and we can do measurements up to 150 kV. So, you know, um, 
other people use uh, voltage dividers with a multimeter as an example. That's another approach rather than a high voltage meter. The problem being that each meter has different input impedance and that can throw off your measurement. So one of the advantages of this system here is that you can calibrate the meter, you can calibrate the probes separately, they don't have to be done together. But um, if you use a voltage divider, it's important to calibrate both the meter and the uh, divider together. So you have to send them both in. So, um, Here's the uh, advantage of the rangeless design. So you, you've probably all seen these curves. I see them on oscilloscopes. I remember doing a lot of E-knob type of measurements um, and you see it on meters as well. So usually you have a base uncertainty and then a percentage of range. And so what happens is when you're at the bottom of the range, you've got the worst accuracy, the highest uncertainty. But as the signal gets bigger and bigger, your uncertainty drops and then you change ranges and it goes back up again. So that sawtooth waveform, that's the way other people do it. The smoothed waveform, that's the way we do it. Uh, that's our one range design and our response and our uncertainty. Uh, notice that um, we have a 24 month spec also. Not only are we more um, accurate, and not only are we more predictable, but it's also predictable for a longer period of time. So that's our meter right there. So uh, if, if you get these slides, if you hit control click on this, it'll go over to YouTube. It'll show you a demo of the meter. I'm not going to do that today, but it gives you, uh, it, you know, it's five minutes long or six minutes long, and I'll show you a real good overview of it. So, and same thing uh, for high pots and high voltage equipment. So here's an example of us using the meter with a high pot. And again, it's able to do both. Um, one thing I haven't shown you on the meter is if you look at that top display, you will see that it has a stair state pattern. So the meter is also a data logger. And so if you want to um, plot your voltage over time, and especially if you're looking at linearity and um, uh, transients, uh, this is not for real fast transients, it's not an oscilloscope, but for slow transients, this would be very good for spotting that. <coughs> Here's the 4700 specs uh, for one year. Okay. I'm not going to read it to you because you can kind of see, but it will be in the slides as well if you want more detail. And here's the available probes that can go to the meter. So the common probes, you know, there's not a lot of people operating above 35 kV. Either most people use the meter just with the meter itself or maybe a 35 kV probe. We have both a handheld and we've got uh, the bench type of meters. The bench type meter is going to be more accurate. So that, that's what you want to use if you can do it. If you um, if you look at the pictures, I'm just going back a little bit to show you the picture. You see those meters, the probes over there on the right. Um, what what you're seeing is that's a that big ring is to diffuse the uh, electric field and reduce corona effect to make a more precise measurement. So that's why you would it's better to do that than use the handheld probe. So you know you've got a problem with corona if it's glowing purple. <laughs> that means the air is being ionized in that area and it's sucking off some of the energy and it's degrading your measurement. So uh, the way that probe works, it's an unusual probe. There's a screw on the top and what you do is you take a wire and you screw it down to the top of that. And uh, again, that diffuser helps you make a better measurement. So. <laughs> Diffuser. Yeah, I call it a diffuser. I, I don't. It diffuses the electric field. Uh, there's probably better names for it. Does anyone have any questions? Maybe this is a good place to stop for a second. Hmm. That's a 70 kV one. What about you? Like it? Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, works. Uh, it's pretty accurate compared to uh, beep brand. It's, uh, you know, this this meter is so accurate, there's two countries use it as their national standard. 
Um, and, and they're small countries. They're, I think, like Singapore and Malaysia, I think, were the countries. But essentially, it's the highest standard in the whole country. I've seen it on other people's certs, too. Yep. So uh, here's, a, here's more detail on the probe specs. Again, I won't go through. I won't read this to you. Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, for peak measurements, for peak volume measurements. Yes. What is the uh, bandwidth? How how short? How what short is the peak? bandwidth on this? Uh, yes. I'd have to look it up, but it's not real high. This is designed mm -hmm. to be like zero to five hundred hertz, if I remember. Oh, right. oh I see. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not an RF meter. Right. Um, why are you thinking about using it for radar or something? No, 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 no. Just you know, to, to it actually uh, help helps me to to locate it in is a uh, what it is from the frequency the point of view oh, in yeah, what yeah. range, you know? Yeah, most most so of our stuff most yeah. of our stuff's all geared towards power measurements, so it's all at right. Uh, uh, power main frequencies and their harmonics. It's like yeah. 600 hertz, I think. I'm just looking at mine. Yes. So, uh, is this something associated with the sampling period or, or, or is just a kind of average value for that time? Um, it measures peak voltage. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Peak voltage. It, it is. It is a, a digital uh, in, instrument, right? Excuse so, me. It is a di digital in instrument, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. So it does something. Excuse me. Hold on a second. We got. So it. Let me, let me go back. You, you see. You see that picture right there. Yeah. You, um. Nope. The wrong one here. See, uh, see that picture right there on the top. Yes. You see how it does peak to peak. Yeah. That's that's your peak to peak voltage. That's that's what. It yeah, does. I see. Yep. Oh. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So the second product of interest is the uh, PA920 power analyzer, and um, this is the most accurate power analyzer in the world with a base uncertainty of 0.024%. So um, if you compare us to a Yokogawa, remember they have a base uncertainty and then a percentage of range. And one of the things we discussed is that we don't have a percentage of range adder. So if you compare us to Yokogawa, you have to compare just our base range to their base range and the percentage of range uh, adder. So if you do that, what you'll see is that this is the most accurate power analyzer in the world. And uh, we can measure, depends on the instrument that you use, but um, we actually have several of these in the family, but we can go up to 1,625 volts RMS, and that's um, that's continuous. We can actually hit 3 kV for short, very short periods. And we can do up to 32 amps uh, with our internal shunt. If you need more than that, you just get a um, shunt that uh, outputs in current, and then uh, you input into our amps, and then we can scale it for you to give you the precise measurement. So it measures voltage, current, and uh, watts, um, also phase, and uh, you can use this for calibrating shunts and voltage dividers. It's good for single phase or three phase, delta or y, it doesn't matter. And we have milli degree phase angle resolution. So, um, you know, you can calibrate a power analyzer with a voltage meter and with a current meter and a phase angle meter. Um, but this is easier because it's just one instrument all combined and all of it's highly accurate to give you the most precise measurement. Okay, so this is what the meter looks like. And if you look at that display, um, I'm going to start at the bottom on the yellow letters and you can see it's a frequency meter and there's your voltage and your current. Um, it does power factor, reactive power, apparent power, and watts. But when you turn on the detailed measurements, it will go in and give you, this thing does so much, it's, it's hard to believe what it does in one box, uh, including peak measurements, crest factor measurements, um, inrush measurements, efficiency measurements, um, all of those uh, are in here. 
So, yeah, there's there's the big numbers right there. That's got plug-in cards, I think, right? Yes. Uh, so it comes with no cards. Every now and then, someone will order it with no cards, and <laughs> uh, so so we have to explain to them. Yeah, you need to put in at least one card, which would give you all these measurements. Two cards, and you can do things like. Um, uh, DC inverters, you can look at the input and the output and measure efficiency. Three cards could be used for doing um, three three phase power, of course. And then four cards can look at, uh, let's say you had a three phase AC in and a one and DC out, you could look at that with four cards. We can also combine these systems, it's kind of modular to get up to 12 channels. Um, if you need more, we can we can figure that out too. So there, there's more detail right there on the um, on the particular like positive peak and negative peak. So here's the uh, specifications, and so you see that there's a continuous rating. That's the one at the bottom. Maybe we should put that at the top because that's the one you mostly care about. But you can see like at 1600 volts, we can actually take 4000 volts if it's it's a short spike. So um, the bandwidth can be up to two megahertz. Let's see, two megahertz on that one card and... Two megahertz? Yeah. Holy smoke. I mean, <laughs> what's out there that is putting out two megahertz? That's, that's incredible. Well, so um, you're right. Nothing's at two megahertz, but I'll tell you what we do see. We see avionics at uh, up to 900 hertz. Yeah. And then and then someone wants to see like the 20th harmonic of that. So that takes you up quite a bit. And then we can actually go up to the 500th harmonic. Wow, that is so, uh, seriously high bandwidth. Yeah, and then um, more than that, it uh, um, it also has an oscilloscope built into it, and it also has a spectrum analyzer built into it. So the spectrum analyzer is not the type, you know, like you go to Rodeo or Tech or uh, Keysight and, and they sell you an RF spec in. This is for power measurements. And so um, it actually, you don't need a double probe. It's taking a look at the uh, input voltage and current, and then your spec in is working on those input voltages and currents. And so, yeah, we can go up quite high. Uh, the cards on here are like 22 to 24 bit A to Ds which is like 4 million digitizing levels. Um, so it, it, that's one way, one reason why we're able to make very accurate measurements and, um, and very small measurements uh, with this as well. Um, so yeah, oscilloscope, data logger, uh, spectrum analyzer, harmonics analyzer, it's all in this instrument right here, okay? And there's, there's uh, again, I'll, we'll send you the slides, you can take a look, but there's the specs on how it works there. One, one quick question. Are all sure. these with a 17025 Cal certificate and data? Yes, absolutely. Perfect, thank you. By the way, we have a high voltage lab in Poway, and I understand there aren't very many, you know, in the U.S. Um, and there may only be about three in the whole Western U.S. So we have, um, I think we're able to calibrate up to like 70 kV uh, in, in, in Poway. So you guys have been good about asking questions, um, but are there any other questions while we're on power analyzers? I've seen two of them come through here. They measure up very well with the uh, fluke precision uh, current shunts. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, sell a lot of shunts with these power analyzers. We we don't want to sell shunts. I mean, that's not our business, but people always ask us to put on the quote. So mm -hmm. um, typically we've been using the Danny Sense uh, current sensors just to let you know. The and what? Um, Danny Sense, have you ever seen those? No, a guy named Danny? 
I, I have no idea. But I, I can tell you, I looked at one the other day for a guy, and it was like 0.1% uh, uncertainty, which was pretty good. I've and, never and heard of them before. Yeah, Danny Sense. Just take a look at D-A-N-I-S-E-N-S-E. -E. Okay, and, the spin-off from Dan Physique in Denmark. What's that? A spin-off from Dan Physique in Denmark. Denmark. Okay. 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 Cool. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the uh, 2000 MN. This is our third product, and uh, this calibrator, this calibrator is unusual in that you know you've got the fluke, the big calibrators that sit on the bench, and then you got the small handheld calibrators that you can walk around the factory floor. This is in the middle. Uh, you can walk around with it. It's portable. It's battery powered, but it has the uh, it has the accuracy of a big bench meter. Okay, um, you know, depending on the bench mirror, of course. But um, bottom line is we can go 0 to 22 volts DC, and we can output 4 to 20 milliamp current loops, and we can calibrate the thermal couple instrumentation, such as data loggers, and we can calibrate pressure and flow instrumentations. But look at this accuracy specs on that. It's about 10 times better than anything else that's handheld and portable. Better so than 753. Yeah. It is. Better yeah. specs. Yeah. We had the Air Force uh, came and bought, uh, I, I don't remember how many hundreds of these, and they like to use them on the flight line. They, they go on out to the flight line and they, they check to make sure everything's working properly. So this could be used for performance verification. You, you might take the instrument back to the lab for the actual calibration, but just for day-to-day -day performance verification, this is a really good instrument. It's, it's corded, but I think the battery is an option, right? I think that's right, yes. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, I can tell you it's not the exploding battery type because I had to take it on a plane. I had to check on that. You know, when you get to the airline, they go, make sure you don't have a nickel metal hydride battery or whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't have that. We have the non-exploding version right here. Oh, darn. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so can, can i interject a question or, or maybe i sure. should let you go on sure. I, I guess i'm I've, I've read a lot about it already from the literature sheet haven't seen one yet but i'm kind of curious about the uh, pressure and flow um what 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 are the interfaces for for getting to uh, uh, uh say a pressure and flow is that yeah, just doing Four to twenty or something. Or? So well, you can do four to twenty, but um, basically, um, the way we calibrate pressure and flow instrumentation is we output a DC to simulate what a pressure meter or a flow meter would output. Okay, so, like zero to ten or zero to five or four to twenty. Yeah. So you you give us the scaling factors, and then essentially you can enter in and PSI and it outputs that DC voltage to go into your instrumentation to look like, you know, if you put in 10 PSI, it looks like 10 PSI. Okay. Okay, so the, um, the normal instrument doesn't come with temperature. Uh, you know, to me, I, I, the temperature is the most calibrated physical phenomenon in the world. And yep. so I can't imagine ordering it without temperature, but some people do. Um, all they care about is uh, DC. But, um, you know, this thing, if you take a look at some of the Fluke handhelds, they're like $7,500. Yeah, this yeah. One, this, right. one with, this one with temperature is like 3600 So it's, you know, close wow. to half, half the price and 10 times more accurate. That's a good point. Yep. And, and we've been making this a long time. It's a stable product. Uh, we've, uh, we've probably been making this for at least 15 years. So. Oh, geez. Okay. Didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. So here's actually some comparisons, um, and you can see the specs for yourself. But yeah, we're about ten times better. Hmm. Nice. Thank it you. Does it does all the thermocouple types too? It looks like. Yeah, it does. Um, there was someone had one thermocouple the other day that we don't do, unfortunately, but. It was a rare thermocouple. I forget which type it was. Yeah. But we do we do the ones on this list, yeah. Hmm. 
So yeah, if you get the um, if you get the slides, you can hit Control Click on this. It'll go to YouTube and it'll give you a demo of the meter. That'd be nice for the lab. Yep. Yeah. Is it? You know, I I, I was at a uh, trade show a while back, and a guy came up to me and says, "Whatever you do, don't discontinue those." He goes, "That's the heart of everything we do in our Cal Lab." And he Good says, part. "We've got we've got like four of them over here, and they get used all day every day." Yeah, I could see where that'd get a lot of use here. Yep. So uh, we give you specs for 24-hour, 90-day, and one year. Um, so you can decide what uncertainty you need. So the more specs, again, it's in the slide. You can take a look through them and see. And I think that's about it. Uh, we just wanted to show you these three products and um, uh, hopefully at some point it might help you in the future. Uh, this is my contact information and uh, feel free to call me or email me if you have any questions.